Fake, test, and annoy. In this video, we're gonna talk about all three of these, the differences and how you can use them in sparring to control your opponent. You don't wanna miss this one. Let's go. What's happening, friends? My name is Nick. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time on here, though, and you're a martial artist looking to make the most out of your training and gain your edge, then make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon. That way you won't miss a thing. But with that, let's jump into this idea here. All right, so the first one we're talking about is faking. Now, this is the most common one that people talk about, and actually most people lump all three of these together into one category and just refer to it all as faking. It's not but fake. really what we wanna think about when we're talking about this category is the idea of faking just means that I'm trying to elicit a large response from the person. All right, so when I throw a fake, you can throw it in a number of different ways from a lot of different angles and different techniques, but essentially I'm throwing something that looks to the opponent like I'm throwing a technique. So it should have all of the intent, all of the, the forward pressure, everything that we normally would have with a technique and just without the actual technique. So if I'm throwing a fake for a reverse punch, I might either throw halfway out or what I actually prefer is to put my body in and then pull my hand back. All right, so what this allows, if I go halfway out and that person is fast enough, they might actually catch this out of the way and go in. Also, I'm, I've just used up all my firepower so I can't actually throw a good punch from here. If I fake this way and they come in, I can still throw a reverse punch afterwards. So I can go from here, one, and from your angle, you're going to see my hand move. So our linear vision is pretty crappy for the most part. We see it really good distance wise, side to side. But when I do this, it's really hard to see how far we are apart. So if I go like this and I throw my hand out or I pull my hand back, your eyes just register that there's some distance change going this way. All right, so when I go one, this way I have the ability one button, and to follow up and go with a technique right afterwards. Where if I fake out this way, I just left myself open here, but I've also eliminated my ability to throw in a number of different ways uh, with this rear hand. All right, so just a little tip on that. Normally what we like to do is push our hips forward, pull this hand back. Now make sure you're not going to get close enough where they're gonna hit you, all right? Or if you do, be ready to block and go over the top with that technique. All right, so this is the idea of faking. So when I do this, I want to elicit a large response. I either want them to move, I want them to block, or I want them to punch or throw a technique, all right? So it's either to draw them out or push them back. All right, now the second one we're talking about, instead of just faking, we're gonna talk about testing, all right? So testing is gonna be a little bit smaller. I'm not gonna throw as much intent, but I'm just gonna see if I can elicit a small response. So where a fake, I wanna elicit a large response, get them to actually do a technique or move. All I wanna do with a test is just a little bit. I just wanna kinda of test to see how they're gonna respond. If their hand twitches down or up, their body kinda of pushes back a little bit, or I see this hand here twitch, it gives me an idea of what their intent is. All right, so if I'm moving and I just kind of test this way, or I just kind of testing, test testing, testing. this way, just a really small thing, I might push my body forward a little bit. It'll tell me if they're going to move, counter, or just stand their ground, and it'll give me an idea of how I can uh, change my strategy to, uh, to control that person a little bit better. All right, so if I test and I test and I test, eventually they might respond in a larger way by actually just moving out to make distance and get comfortable or just commit in because they've gotten used to that. So I wanna make sure I don't do this all of the time. I just wanna do it every once in a while. Usually I'll do it after I break off at an angle and I'll test really fast just to see what they do. If we break off at an angle and I test and their body sinks and this hand kind of twitches a little bit, I know that they want to do a counter reverse punch. Or if they rock their body back onto their back leg, I know they want to do a kick off their front leg. So we just test 
And then when we receive back kind of the, the data from that test, then I kind of structure my technique or my strategy around that. So after I test, I'm gonna get some sort of a response. Now at a high level, you might not get anything. So that's when you really know that you're up against somebody who's experienced and composed or super inexperienced and has no idea what they're looking for in the first place. So kind of polar opposites. But if you fight somebody who it's their first day training and you fake at them or you test at them, they might not do anything because they don't know. If you fight somebody at a very high level and you fake or test at them, they might not do anything because they know better. All right, so we just have to kind of judge it and see what they do. If they do nothing and you know that they're at a high level, you know that you're gonna have to work a little bit harder to pull them out of that comfort zone a little bit. All right, last but definitely not least, and in fact, if you've seen me spar, you probably know this is one of my favorite ones. You might not have known uh, kind of why we do it or what it's for, but it's what I call just annoy. All right, and that's the whole idea of it. It's kind of a funny thing to think about, but the reason why I just refer to it as that is because that's the whole thing that I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get your attention from how can I hit this person to why is he doing that? As soon as I can get your mindset to switch from how can I punch you to why is this happening, then I am controlling your strategy. All right, so what I might do is if I'm set up into a normal guard, I might drop my hands down, bring them back up. I might move this hand around a little bit, not as a fake, not as a test, just because I know that you're not gonna react to it, but you are gonna think what is going on with that hand. All right, I might just shake this arm out. I might uh, kind of wave it out. I might wave this arm out. I might reach out and just touch your front hand. Just smack it out of the way and then move back. All right, I'm gonna do all sorts of different things. I might move, move, move. I might just look down at your front foot. All right, just so you go, wait, why is he doing that? So as soon as I get that response from you, I now control a big portion of what your next strategy is. All right, so you put this together with your test and your fake, and you have a lot of awesome ways that you can control that person and make them kind of fall into your trap of whatever you wanna do. All right, so as a really quick recap, our faking is to generate some sort of a large response. Testing is to get some sort of a small, really fine detail response. And then annoying them is just to change their mindset and get them to think about something other than their own strategy. All right.